my name is Emily. Welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. Amanda is filming right now. In today's video, thank you, Amanda. She's keeping us in and out of gear. <laughs> I'm over here trying so to keep us down sea, but you guys have a nice, calm view of Emily speaking and we're not wobbling up and down. We don't want our viewers to get seasick. Today's video, we, our goal is to show you guys how to find a deep drop spot. So we're talking a spot to catch black belly rose fish and golden tile fish, the elusive golden tile fish. Now, no guarantees on the golden tile. However, they do live where rosies live. So if we can find rosies, there's a chance that we can find that golden tile fish. So we're gonna show you how to find a spot and then we're, we're gonna try a new spot. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be like, all right, let's try this with you. We are gonna start on some simple knowledge on how golden tile fish and black belly rose fish live. Now, we're gonna be looking for muddy, sandy, mushy bottom. Golden tile fish are known for burrowing in the mud. They don't necessarily live on a big rock structure. They don't necessarily live on a wreck. They live in deep, muddy areas. And then black belly rose fish, they pretty much live in around 800 feet of water or plus, and they're all in that sandy area. Now, golden tile fish and black belly rose fish, they're both bottom feeders, meaning they're gonna eat things like crustaceans and little shrimps and things like that down there, which actually makes their meat very, very sweet. So if you find where the black bellies live, you're likely to find where rose, where, if you find where the black bellies live, you're likely to find where the goldens live. If you look at your GPS, you can see where all these lines are really, really tight. That's showing a really deep drop off. And as the lines spread out, your drop off is gonna be less and less Deep. And if, if we look out here, what we're looking for is a nice flat area in around 800 feet of water for rosies. So if you look right here, this is right in the 800 foot range, our lines are super wide apart so we know it's flat. There's not a lot of drop off going on. And right next to it though, we do see the drop off. So we wanna try fishing in a nice flat area for rosies in around 800 feet of water. And this right here looks like the perfect spot to try. We don't wanna try down here. We don't wanna try up here. 800 feet of water, and something nice and flat. So if we go over here, we can see this is also 800 feet, but it's not flat bottom. Right here we have our flat bottom at 800 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and tap my screen to push mark and tap go to, and we're gonna go ahead and try that spot out. We just got to our fishing spot, and as you can see, it's a little bit bumpy out here today, or a lot of bit bumpy out here. We got some big swells. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep one twin on the throttles, which is either gonna be me or Emily, and the other twin's gonna do the fishing. So what I'm doing is I'm keeping the motors into the seas and into the current to slow my drift down. I'm bumping it in and out of gear, keeping myself nice and straight so I'm not going side to side and rocking. Emily's setting up our rig and we're gonna be using squid for bait. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drop here and see if we found the black bellies and the tile fish. And we're gonna go over the rig and all the details for you when we're in shallower water and I can actually slow down and show it all to you. First and foremost, let's plug our Tanacom in. Tanacom is on and we are gonna use our squid for bait. I like to just take the squid's hook and put one on each hook. You guys can see that this chicken rig has five hooks on it. I'm hooking, just hooked two of them so far. I like to double hook the squid because it is going down to 800 feet of water. You need something on there. This is where bonita chunks would be really good because of that tuna skin would help it stay on there. We use six to eight pounds of lead because we are fishing right now in three to four knots of current. So we need a lot of lead to get to bottom and do our best to maintain bottom, but usually it can be anywhere from a pound to eight pounds, any more than eight pounds of lead, and I wouldn't even recommend fishing like this. Here's our lead, and at the bottom of our rig, we have this heavy duty snap swivel and our lead. Same lead you use for sword fishing. Just gonna drop it down in the water, come to the Tanacom, hit free spool. Can you see it, Amanda? I see it. And Amanda's job is to basically do her best to keep this line up and down. She doesn't want to get it too scoped out. We don't want to get it under the boat. She's just going to drive the boat in order to keep a nice safe distance from the line to the motors and the line to the seafloor. Perfect guys, we're on bottom. Now I'm going to keep my thumbs on the spool 
and I'm literally gonna let it out. We wanna be dragging the bottom because these fish are living in holes and we need th that bait to basically drag past their hole. We're watching the rod tip, we're looking for bites, small little taps is all we're looking for. And when we see those, we're gonna lock the spool up and reel. There Let we go, bite, those are bites, bite. bites. Ready? Reel. All right, let's try that one more time. Okay. The reason why I'm locking it up and dropping it back in the free spool is because there's five hooks on there, guys. Let's bring up five fish if we can. I usually do this about three times, no more than three, maybe four tops. And then I'll bring the whole rig up and see what we got. Yeah! Do yeah! you think we found a new rosy spot? I think we found a new rosy spot. So, guys, just so you know, this is the first time I'm fishing this spot. I gave you the technique, I used the technique, and if we, well, we know there's fish down there, I just don't know what we caught, but because we saw the bite, but we would have found a new rosy spot today with you, um, so I'm very excited. I hope you believe us. I hope you believe I'm us. I really do. Because obviously, guys, we could have come to a spot that we've been to before, and you might would never know but i really here here wait you're watching this right you're watching me grab yeah. the phone look at this no previous lines at all we haven't been in this area check that out you're not going to be able to tell if the rosies are on there until your rig is higher up in the water column the water is so cold down there and the rosies don't really react to being hooked until that feel that warm water and then they're like whoa i'm hooked so when you go over your lock if you don't see them on there just you need to commit to it and bring your whole rig up and then once you're in like, I don't know, maybe sometimes 50 feet from the boat or so, then you'll start seeing them react and be like, oh, that's hot water, what, where, where am I? We have a black belly roast fish. This is a oh, big guy so too, fun. look how big he is. Look at that. Yes. All right. What's cool about black belly roast fish is you can actually lift them like a bass get this hook out. We found a rosy. Check it out, you guys. We caught our fish. We found our black belly rose fish. Beautiful, crazy looking fish. Look inside the mouth. The mouths are black and mighty freaky looking. That's <laughs> why we call them black belly rose fish, but we like to call them aliens. They're um, alien fish. I think they're prehistoric creatures. <laughs> they are so fun. They're great to eat. Their meat is so delicate. I say we make another drift and maybe catch a few more of them. Let's go for it. Here we go. Next drop, going down. Look at those They're bites. bites. We're getting bites. I'm giving them a chance to eat it. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Okay, you think we're good, Amanda? Let's let's see them get a little more aggressive. All let's right, make we'll sure wait. that we didn't just get like a tap, but we got like a real bite. All right. All right, all right. They're there. Bring it up. They're there. Bring it up. Bring all it right. up. Bring it up. Go for it. See what we got. Let's see if it's a golden tilefish. This one's really bouncing. I'm thinking there's either one really big fish or there's more than one fish on there. You see how much it's bouncing, guys? That is what we want to see. Oh! Bump the drag up a little, Emily. It's having a hard time with the drag. Okay, Pushing it's it either, okay, I say it's either one really big rosy, more than one rosies, or it could be our tile. So what you guys can see here with the drag is if there's a really big fish on here, we don't want the rod bouncing a bunch like this. If it bounces a bunch, then the fish can actually bounce off. So I want the drag high enough to where I'm constantly gaining, and maybe it just kind of slows down a little bit, but it keeps going. If it's, if it's too loose, you won't gain anything. So I'm sitting here and I'm watching it and I'm gauging it, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna bump it up a little, bump it up a little. And then if it starts bouncing too much, then I'm gonna bounce, drop it back a little. And I'm talking like a quarter inch, guys, nothing crazy. What and do we I have? think we got multiple rosies. Check it out. We got one, one. rosy. 
two, two roses. Yes, we okay. did it. I don't know about you, Amanda. It's a little rough out here. We showed you guys how to catch rosies. We successfully caught a handful of rosies. Let's go in and let's show you all the details of this rig. That was quite the run in. It's pretty rough out here, I'm not gonna lie. Back in 800 feet of water, we were easily running in five foot seas. And now that we're in around 170, you can see the seas have leveled out to maybe twos to threes. Much calmer out here. It's so much nicer, but you can clearly see, I mean, we were getting soaked. There was Look water. At Look at your Look at the shirt. water dripping. My shirt? What's wrong with my shirt? Can, can you, you guys tell? Can see. I don't know if you can tell because of the color of the hoodie. Yeah, you my can see. My left look at, arm. Look at the water. It's soaking wet because I was driving and the waves are coming this way and I was hiding from them the whole time. But now that we're in calmer water, I'm going to go ahead and show you our rig. We are going to start with our Tanacom. This is our reel, the Tanacom 1000. It's a great reel for deep dropping and for kite fishing. Now we have ours spooled with 80 pound braid. And that is because we double this as a kite fishing reel. If you are only going to deep drop, I would be spooling this with 50 pound braid, maybe 60 pound braid. Because with 80 pound braid, deep dropping 800 feet of water, there's a lot of drag. So the less drag you have, the better. So if you're not kite fishing, don't do what we did. Spool with 60 pound braid. Our rod, we have a bent butt rod right here. It's a team rain shadow rod. And I will go ahead and get the numbers for you on the exact rod blank this is in the description box. Coming off of our reel, we have a bimini. So I always tie a bimini. And from my bimini, I tie a uni knot to a heavy duty 200 pound snap swivel right here. From here, we go straight to our chicken rig. Now you can make a chicken rig or you can buy it. Ours is from R and R Tackle and it has five hooks on it. We are using the rig with five O hooks. And we use squid for bait all the way down squid or bonita chunks to our lead and the pre-made rigs come with their snap on it right here and you can use anywhere from one pound of lead to eight pounds of lead depending on your current now i don't recommend using your tanacom 1000 for more than eight pounds of lead so if you have a really rough day and the current's nasty out there i would not be deep dropping but that is our rig and those are the details. Am I missing anything, Emily? I think you got it all. The one thing that you did miss was that those add-ons to the hook, they glow, they go in the dark. Oh yes, oh yes. So these glow, these little green, yellow things, they're glow in the dark because you have to think that way, way down at the bottom of the sea, the ocean, there's obviously no sunlight. And that would explain why rosies have such big eyes. They need to visually see. So this kind of adds a little bit of a, I don't know, a flare. The last thing I forgot to mention, which I cannot believe we forgot. There's an expression. It's called no light, no bite. And while we forgot our light today, that is the one thing that when it comes deep dropping, we forget more often than not <laughs> because we've deep dropped multiple times without it and forgotten it. But I'll show you where your light's supposed to go. If you're using a light, which I do recommend having, you would just slide it right onto this snap swivel and it would hang right here next to your chicken rig. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you a light because I even brought it. I literally just forgot to rig it. And here is the light you're going to want to use. This one is $13, but you can definitely buy them a lot cheaper in a pack. And the light, like I said, is just going to attach to your snap swivel all the way up here. And that was such a Guggen mistake, but hey, it happens. And that is one thing we forget every once in a while. It doesn't mean you can't catch fish, but it's always good to have all the bells and whistles. Clearly, no light, no bite is not true for the Gale Forest Twins. We hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions, leave your thoughts in the comments. Let us know. We also have a deep drop video where we did catch a golden tile fish, so we'll link that for you if you want to watch that video. If not, guys, I really appreciate you watching. Make sure you follow Gale Forest Twins on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok.